By the time December of 1941 rolls around, the United States battleship fleet was in a set of three primary conditions. Either the ships had been decommissioned as a result of the Washington and London Naval Treaties and were being used as training ships or target practice ships, the vessels could have been left largely unchanged since they had initially entered service, namely the Tennessee and Colorado classes since these were the newest ships in the fleet at that point, and then there is a select few that had gone through a major reconstruction program. The ships that went into the reconstruction program would come out of it barely resembling their former selves. And one of the features that was added that is highly noticeable and identifiable to these ships was the tripod mast. Today we are going to explore the purpose and setup of the tripod mast. I'm going to use the USS Arizona as the basis since it is one of four United States battleships that would receive two tripod mast. The story of the tripod relates back to its predecessor, the cage mast. Now the United States Navy had always had complications with the cage mast. Their initial designs were too light, which could cause them to collapse in heavy seas, and so they ended up creating a heavier set of cage mast, which still would sway when the guns had fired, or if the ship was in heavy seas, and later on in their lives, it was found that the cage mast bars were actually suffering from various degrees of heavy corrosion, which can be seen in this photograph of fragments from the USS Tennessee's cage mast taken in 1942. Technology had also evolved heavily since the Arizona had entered service, and now gunnery equipment needed to be improved, and they needed a much larger space for this equipment to be handled in, and they needed these to be mounted high since the ship's elevation had effectively been doubled in the reconstruction program, with the elevation of the 14-inch guns going from 15 degrees to 30 degrees, which increased its maximum range from 18,000 meters to 34,000 meters. Designers in the reconstruction program went to work, and they ended up developing what became the tripod mast. The general arrangement of a tripod mast was that it consisted of three primary legs that connected to the bottom of a three-level control top, and about at the midpoint of the legs, there could be a series of platforms installed. In the case of Arizona, both its forward and aft tripod mast contained two platforms. I'm going to examine these structures from the top down, and that means the control tops are up first. Now the control tops between the two masts had two different names, so they didn't get confused. The forwardmost mast contained the foretop, and the main mast contained the main top. Even though these are two separate housings, their functionality was the exact same. At the very top of the structure, we can see a cylindrical shape, and this houses the Mark 20 main battery fire control directors for the 14-inch guns. The second level of the control top contained the spotting platform for the main battery guns, and then the third and lowest level to the control top contained two secondary battery fire control directors, one per side in both control tops. Earlier in the career of the tripod, just below the control tops, we would see this large dial on the foremast, one faced forward, and on the main mast, one faced aft. I've often seen people refer to these as clocks, but in reality, they are what is known as a coordination dial. This is how ships would communicate shooting ranges in the era before voice radio was common. Each concentration dial would have two primary hands, and these hands would have a circular top and a diamond top. One hand represented hundreds of yards, while the other represented thousands of yards. If other vessels in the fleet wanted to see what Arizona's gunnery range was set at, all they would have to do is pull out a pair of binoculars and observe the two hands on the dial to understand how far Arizona was shooting. Later in Arizona's career, we would see that the coordination dials for both masts were removed. And this actually brings us to the next levels, which is the two platforms connecting to the midsection of the legs. Now, for the main mast, the upper platform at one point was the machine gun platform. It contained four 50 caliber machine guns for anti-aircraft duty and anti-boarding duties. However, if we look later in Arizona's career, particularly the last year, we can see that the platform's purpose changed. The four 50 caliber machine guns had been swapped out with four searchlights, and atop the control top, we can see a skytop machine gun platform was added and this is where the 450 caliber guns were moved. The lowest platform to the main mask was simply called the rangefinder platform, and this is because it contained a small caliber rangefinder. 
While we are looking at this photograph, you can also see the extensive system of ladders that crew would have to use to navigate between the platforms on both the foremast and mainmast. With that having been said, this brings us to the foremast, which has a lot more to it, namely because the tripod goes directly into the forward superstructure, and thus I'm going to include that. The lowest level to the forward superstructure was called the flag bridge, and this is because it contained the flag plotting room and the flag commander's office. Just ahead of those was located the conning tower. The next platform was the emergency cabin platform, and this contained the chart house, admiral's emergency cabin, and the radio director finder. Just above that was the navigation bridge, which obviously contained the pilot house. The highest level to the forward superstructure was the rangefinder platform, and this is because it had two Mark 19 rangefinders located on its wings. With that being the highest level to the superstructure, we now get back into the tripod mast itself, which, as I stated earlier, has two platforms. The lower of the two platforms was called the foremast footlock platform, and earlier in its career, this is what held the forward coordination dial. The upper platform was called the foremast machine gun platform, and that is because it consisted of two 50 caliber machine guns, which were still installed on this platform when Arizona was sunk. There is one more piece to the foremast that we have to observe, and it's this platform located at the top of the control top. In early 1942, Arizona was supposed to receive air search radar, and this platform is where that radar was supposed to be installed. However, because the ship was sunk, it never served its purpose. And with that having been said, we have covered the functionality and purpose behind the tripod mast on United States Navy battleships. So, if you have enjoyed this video, why not leave a comment and a like down below, and have a wonderful day.